Hey, what's up guys? It's your boy Lil Herpes back with another Elden Ring challenge video and today we're going to see if we can finally find a sense of happiness in an ever darkening world with no hope for the future generations. Also, we're going to see if we can beat Elden Ring only using weapon skills aka Ashes of War or whatever you want to call them. To make it a tad more interesting, I'm only allowing myself to use a skill on a boss one time, so whatever skill I use for a boss fight, it cannot be used again after that. Cool? Cool. In the last video, the character I tried to make was the one and only second sexiest man alive next to Danny DeVito, the great and powerful Gibby from iCarly. A ton of you did guess it right, and in case your parents didn't tell you enough, I am very proud of you. And for those of you that didn't guess it right, they are probably right to be disappointed in you. Do better. The character I'm making this time is someone that's been a long time coming for the channel, but real quick, for some reason whenever I make a character in this game, they look fine from the front, but from the side they look like they get hard from getting Reddit karma, but from the front they just look like an absolute Chad Thundercock. Anyways, I started with a Vagabond character because he has two weapons and they both have a different weapon skill each, so that just made the most sense to me. I did think about starting with the Samurai since he starts with a sword and a bow, and the bow does have its own weapon skill, but the thought of using a bow gave me PTSD flashbacks to my bow only run and the constant grind for materials for more arrows, so I just said nah. First things first though, we gotta take this helmet off so I can show off my beautiful bald head. The first two weapon skills we start off with are Square Off, which is actually surprisingly good at staggering enemies, and this pokey one with the halberd, which kind of sucks, but it won't take too long for us to get a lot more weapon skills. Some of the weapon skills, like the one with my longsword square off, actually have different options depending on if you do a light or a heavy attack, and my very astute viewers might have noticed that the weapon skills cost FP when you use them, so we are going to have to dump some points into the old blue bar in this run. This man right here is going to be one of our big daddy pimps for this run because he sells a bunch of different weapon skills, and at first I tried to resist the voices in my head that were telling me not to murder him for his bell bearing so I could just buy them from the old ass lady at the round table, but the voices won because I did it anyway. Before I did that, I did buy a couple cool looking weapon skills that I thought looked neat, and then I talked to Melatonin and she offers me a Honda Accord. I offer you an Accord. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. okay, good. Yes. Yeah. Nice. but gives me a horse instead, bitch. After that, I immediately head for Margaret the Foot Omen without doing too much leveling or prep because fuck it, we ball, and I did die a few times, obviously. I chose to use a square off skill for this because it does do a decent amount of damage and it surprisingly staggers him super easy and it brings him down to his knees for that good old gluck gluck sucky McTwist but that wasn't enough to calm me down because I continue to beat his ass afterwards anyway. The skill does come out a bit slow because you do have to hit L2 and then an attack button and I kind of learned just to hit them really quick one after another because it doesn't do any more damage if you let it charge at all. Since it was a bit slow, I would just wait for him to jam his little stick into the ground, hoping he would miss and hit my ass, but after a few good wallops, he went into his second phase. Luckily, the second phase wasn't too bad either. The only attack I would wait for is his hammer slam attack, which was a bit iffy because sometimes he would take a hit from me and then jump away, and then sometimes he'd be a little dickhead and decide to hit me back, and even worse, sometimes he would just jump away before I could touch him at all, which was very no bueno. But eventually, with my super hella epic strategy, I was eventually able to take him to Pound Town. I unlocked another talisman slot after beating him, reminding me that those are actually a thing in this game, and luckily there are a few talismans in this game that affect weapon skills, and I can actually get one pretty easily right now. Unfortunately, it does involve us killing everybody's favorite non-fuckable character in this game. And before you start telling me what a naked poop I am in the comments, I do know that if you finish his questline, you will get a better version of this talisman, but you literally cannot do that until after the fire giant, so screw that. But was it worth getting a dislike from every Jarman fan after killing him? Why yes, because now I do 7 more damage than I did before, and that's a higher number, and I like higher numbers. Now that I'm thinking about it, there are probably plenty of people that would fuck the jar guy, so real quick, let's play Mary Fuck Kill in the comments, I'll go first. I would probably marry Merchant Kale because he's the first merchant that most players are going to find, so he obviously has a steady income, so we won't end up having to live in some place like Kaelid or something like that. And y'all already know, I'm smashing Renala because her feet do something to my boy parts that I just cannot explain. And I'm obviously going to kill the Dung Eater because the man has poo-poo breath and I don't like poo-poo breath. Alright, that was fun and not a waste of everybody's time, and once again, this soy boy beta cuck tells me not to take the main gate, but once again, fuck it, we ball. 
I died a couple times on the next boss because I'm doing dick for damage, so I did go out to level up my sword a bit and come back. I do have to kill the crystal meth boss to get his bell bearing so I can just buy the material I needed, and I decided to use the halberd charge force skill for this fight. And as you can see, this is one of the rare times that I actually had a good idea because I can just easily stun lock him to death with this skill just by doing it over and over and over until he bites the dust. Now we can upgrade our sword a bit for the Rick the Drafted fight, and I switch out my old weapon skill for the spinning slash weapon skill instead. I wasn't nearly as much of a puss boy as I was in the first fight because this skill is a lot faster and the boss is a bit slower so it's just all around great now. The cool thing about the spinning slash skill is you can actually just keep it going if you just keep hitting L2 so you can actually do a pretty good amount of damage to this thick boy if you just keep the attack going as long as you have an opening. And you'll have plenty of time just by jumping over his groundbreaking attack and slightly stepping to the side for his tornado attack. Second phase is also pretty easy, as long as you stay close to him like a fly on shit, you could probably just get behind all of his flame attacks as long as you see them coming. I almost beat his cheeks without taking a single hit, but I decided to bathe in his warm flames to simulate a warm embrace of someone who actually loves me, but other than that, I took him out pretty easy. I did actually run out of FP at one point, but luckily you can still use the skill, it just does way less damage, but I was close enough to the end of the fight that it didn't really matter, so I kissed the homie goodnight and headed off for the next boss. Before the next boss though, I prayed to the fingering gods to activate my great rune, but I didn't even have any rune arcs yet because I'm a dumb bitch, and then I headed for the round table to switch out my spinning slash for the storm blade. Also earlier before the last boss, I did get Ragoon's sword seal talisman because I hate myself, but I forgot to even put it on because I'm such a silly goose. The storm blade is probably one of my favorite weapon skills so far because it just looks super freaking sick dude, like whoa, look at, look at me spin man, look at me go, I'm, I'm gonna get dizzy, I'm gonna get dizzy, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what the fuck that was, I'm bored. <laughs> Next I grab the key for the castle. <laughs> Grab some new drip. And then we head off for the wolf fight. I actually ended up switching out my Stormblade skill for the Impaling Thrust because I wanted to save the Stormblade for the Feet Lady. The red wolf fight might have actually been kind of difficult if he didn't have such little health because there's really not a ton of openings if you don't have a quick attack to use, but that didn't stop me from trying anyway and getting my ass beat. The leaping attack he does, as always, is pretty easy to avoid and get a hit in with, and it really didn't take too many hits to land to actually kill him. 44th President of the United States 1, Stupid Magic Wolf 0. After that, I quickly murder the Feet Lady simp and then take on the Feet Lady herself. Surprisingly, I was able to beat her first try, which I was super happy about, and also I was happy that I could kill the girls in the first phase with one hit instead of two, because that saved me a dick load of FP for the second phase. I did have to take her down three separate times to fully kill her in the first phase, but it wasn't too bad. I was super glad that Pastai wasn't a complete dipshit, and realized that a ranged attack like the Stormblade would probably be better for this fight, because it makes it much easier to avoid getting hit by her magic attacks and her little spinny staff move. My new drip also has decent magic resistance, so that's pretty cash money if I do say so myself. I actually managed to get her health down pretty far before she started summoning the real boss of this fight, the goddamn Bloodhound Knight, and he did cockblock me from hitting her a few times, but alas, she could not stand the strong breeze coming from my sword and went downtown Cleveland Brown. I was kind of out of cool looking weapon skills at this point, so I went out hunting for some more. I ended up grabbing the Flame of Red Mains, bought these three from our old pal Roger, and I also got the Flaming Slash and a Spectral Spear, which obviously needs a spear to use, so I went ahead and bought one. Also, I got this Blood Slash skill, and I used that to take down the Mac Daddy Dragon for all of his sweet, sweet runes. The Tree Sentinel fight was actually pretty tough. I ended up using the Glintstone skill that I got from Roger because it's a range attack, but the range on it was much shorter than I expected, which got me killed quite a bit. Eventually, I got in a good rhythm of hitting him between fireballs, and the more fireballs he does, the better, because you can basically just dodge, hit, dodge, hit, until he finally gives up on the fireballs. In the second phase, he does keep using it, plus whenever he does his lightning strike attack, you can just roll right through it and get another hit and roll away before he crushes your puny little skull with his big ol' hammer. This did take me a handful of attempts, but eventually I stopped being a greedy little piggy and took my time with the fight, and that made it much smoother, and we turned this boy into glue real quick. Before the next boss, I switched on over to the good old spear so I could use the spectral spear skill so I can have a nice ranged attack, and for the future I also equipped the sword dance skill on my sword which looks pretty badass. I even showed that skill to my girlfriend and she was so impressed that she immediately gave me the sloppiest of toppies so that's pretty cool too. 
I also grabbed the next smithing stone bell bearing to upgrade my weapon, and then I also grabbed the black bow so I could use it for later. Now, doctors don't want you to know this, but with this one simple trick, you can defeat the piss ghost quite easily. All you gotta do is get some distance, wait for him to start feeling a little froggy and leap at you, and then you dodge, and then just start swinging. It works every time except when it doesn't work but it works most of the time and it's a pretty reliable way to beat him without too much frustration if you suck ass at this game like yours truly after beating him i did unlock another talisman slot which reminded me that i now have two empty talisman slots go me so i went ahead and grabbed the dragon shield talisman for a little extra defense and the ritual sword talisman which increases your damage when your health is full and as we all know i have literally never been hit a single time in this game ever in my life so it's the perfect talisman for a skilled gamer such as myself but i wouldn't recommend it to all you noobs out there I did have to kill a boss to get it, and I used the flame strike to do it, and there is another skill that looks very similar to this called Flame of Redmane, so don't get confused and think I use this twice if you see me using it in the future. For Margaret the Dope Fiend, I switched over to the spear because I'm kinda dog shit at this fight unless I have a ranged attack, and the spectral spear makes this fight much easier. Also, he has a very similar spear attack with a giant spear, and I wanted to prove that little spears can do just as good, you know. I, I mean, there's nothing wrong with having a little spear, and some people would even say that his spear is actually too big and a little uncomfortable, you know? So it's, it's not about how big it is, it's just how you use your little spear, and I think having a little spear is very respectable, and you shouldn't make fun of anyone who's trying their best, okay? So, um, yeah, first phase, I just kept my distance and kept chucking spears at his stupid head whenever I could. Anyway, the second phase is a lot more annoying because he gains sentience and actually starts avoiding most of my spear throws, but if you catch him off guard or in the middle of a combo or something like that and try not to get poked by his weapons, you can finish him off pretty easily. It did take quite a while, missing a lot of my attacks and waiting for a good opening, but eventually I gave him that knick-knack paddywhack and finished him off for good. After that, I wanted to get a different sword, even though it really doesn't matter that much, but I decided to get the Noble Slender Sword simply because I googled the best sword in Elden Ring, and this popped up. It looks pretty similar to my basic longsword, except this one's gold. And this way, if I ever need two skills for one fight, I'll have an extra sword for that now. Now we can head on over to the big fiery boy himself, and at first I tried this spinny sword thing, which kind of sucked, and then I tried this magic sword thing, which was a little bit better, but also kind of sucked. So instead, I went out into the lands and killed this roly boy for his lightning strike skill, and yeah, now this is what I'm talking about. This is honestly probably one of the better skills I've used so far, because you can just keep continuously using it over and over, and that is perfect for the fire giant's slow attacks, because usually I can get a few strikes off before I have to roll away. The damage is decent, it's quick, it's cheap, and the range is actually surprisingly good on it, so it was just perfect for this fight, and I was able to get through the entire first phase completely unscathed. Not the second phase, though. I was trying to go for his wrist at first, but the lock-on just did not want to cooperate, but I was still getting some hits on his weird stomach face thing, and imagine getting some head from that bad boy. After that, I just started riding around on ye old horse, jumping off, getting a hit or two whenever I could, and then riding away again. It would be great if I could actually just use this skill on top of the horse, but no, that would be too easy and too cool, so we're just gonna have to do it the old-fashioned way. It was a pretty tedious process, and he was kind of beating my ass a lot, but the range of the lightning strike really helped me out a lot during this fight, and eventually I knocked him down and finished him off by hitting his wrist, and I definitely planned on killing him at the very last second right before he killed me. It was definitely on purpose to show what a cool gamer guy I am, and not a completely terrifying accident at all. For the foreskin duo, I tried to use the skill with the flail that I had called Upward Cut, and yeah, I don't know what I was thinking because I got my shit pushed in quite easily. So I ended up just coming back with a skill that lets me summon these cool little magic swords that just float around me and automatically attack an enemy that's close by, which is perfect for this fight because I don't have to sit there while my guy does some overly long anime attack just to get hit off screen by the other boss. The damage ain't much, but it's honest work. I pretty much just kept hiding behind pillars, summoning my swords, and then walking out to let them fly at somebody's face for literally like 20 minutes at least. Like, seriously, this fight took forever. And I mainly just stuck to attacking the bigger one, because once you get him into the second phase, he'll start doing this rolling attack, which is basically free damage for you as long as you hide behind the pillar. It's a bit harder to deal with him in the second phase, but it's basically the same thing. Just running around, letting the swords do all the work, and annoyingly you do actually have to face the enemy you want the swords to attack, but other than that, it's a very useful skill for this fight. Eventually though, after a very long time, I took the foreskin bros down, and I also got the black flame tornado skill, so that's pretty neat. Before the clergyman beast fight, I decided to get the mighty shot weapon skill for the black bow I got earlier, because doing this fight bow only actually makes it pretty easy, and I like easy. 
So I went out, bought a bunch of fire arrows, some regular arrows, and some serpent arrows, and that's when I remembered that you can't actually change the weapon scale on special weapons like the black bow if they upgrade with the somber smithing stones, so instead we're just going to use the barrage scale that comes with the black bow instead, and save the mighty shot for something later. First phase, easy peasy lemon squeezy because all you gotta do is just stay far away, dodge an attack, shoot a bunch of arrows at a stupid face, and then dodge again, and then just continue that until he's dead. A very complex strategy that I would not recommend for anyone below 200 IQ points as you will probably go insane. Second phase is pretty similar except now he's all spooky scary and stuff and I like to shoot him after he did his 3 slash combo in the air and also after he does his 1 million cuts jujitsu ultra weave attack and just repeat that process over and over again and he'll go down pretty easy. But beating him is not what's important here. What's important is now I have new drip and this is some of my favorite armor in the game so now I can flex on all of the bitches with confidence. Also I grabbed a bunch of the boss weapons for their unique weapon skills that you literally can't get anywhere else. And that also gave me the idea to maybe do a boss weapons only run, so if you want to see that, just comment, I'm a big baby, goo goo gaga, baby needs milky. Thanks. These boss weapon skills are actually some of the coolest weapon skills in the game for sure, but it's really hard to use them safely because they all have these overly long dramatic animations that's just gonna have most of the bosses look at you and laugh while you're twirling around doing backflips and shit, and then just proceed to curb stomp you into next week. But I'm gonna try to use them anyway because I just think they're neat. Alright, let's get the snakey boy out of the way because they give you a weapon with a unique weapon skill specifically for this boss and it just completely wrecks his shit. A little fun fact Ty Taylor lore here, the first time I ever fought this boss I thought you could only use the weapon scale to damage him because in Dark Souls 3 there's a similar boss fight to this where you can only use the weapon scale on that weapon to damage him, but in this fight you can actually use any attack that'll do damage so I've actually done this with only the weapon skill because I am a silly little dipshit. <laughs> Tee -hee. For our boy Radon, I'm a pussy so I'm just gonna use a bow and I went ahead and got the Reign of Arrow skill and boy was that a stupid fucking idea because you kinda need him to stand still for this to work and this dude moves around more than most bosses in the game so Chief called and he said this ain't it. He also told me to switch to the Phantom Slash skill because in his words not mine he says it looks hella sick nasty. I did die a handful of times but I ended up getting pretty lucky just by hugging his nuts and just kept smashing that L2 button and praying to our lord and savior Danny DeVito and he blessed me with the luck of 1 million leprechauns because I beat him in like 3 minutes without having to try too hard. I wish I would have used that skill for a better cause because it looks super cool but fuck it. Cause there is no cock like horse cock. Send your and now we move on to the Lord of Period Blood, and this is where I decided to use my Mighty Shot because I remembered in my bow only run I beat this guy on my second try ever, and also since the Lord of Blood is somehow weak to blood, I stocked up on some blood arrows as well. In the first phase, I stayed very, very far away because I am in fact a scared little puss boy, and I poisoned him at first with my serpent arrows, and then I switched on over to the blood arrows to do some real damage. But then I forgot to drink my little Capri Sun mix to make me immune to his attack in the middle of the fight, and I died. But I kept on trucking along anyway, and I remembered to use my Capri Sun next time, and after that I just kept running and running until he stops chasing me, get some shots off, get my ass beat a little, and eventually I just start to run even farther away until he slowly starts to walk towards me, and then I shoot him in the face because that is a little bit safer. Okay, so on to the Melania fight, and you guys are gonna be a little disappointed, and I swear on my dog and my Renala body pillow that I did beat her. It took an extremely long time, and I was gonna do the whole thing where I show me dying a million times before I actually beat her, so I was recording every attempt I was doing, and while I was recording, I ran out of storage space without noticing. I swear I did beat her though, and I would tell you if I couldn't do it because I've done that like five times already, so I have absolutely no shame in saying I'm not good enough to beat her. This is one of my better attempts though, and as you can see, I can avoid her waterfall dance most of the time now, and that's like 90% of the difficulty in this fight in the first and the second phase. I'm still pretty salty though, I do hate myself and you probably hate me as well and you probably want me to die a slow painful death but hopefully you'll forgive me for my terribleness. I even bought more storage for my computer after this because I literally only had one terabyte which isn't that bad but when you're constantly recording gameplay it fills up pretty quick. So now I have a whopping 4 terabytes in my computer so hopefully something like this will never happen again. I'm sorry, I hope we can still be friends and you can still come to my birthday party, Charlie will be there and we will have cake. Alright, so before the Daddy Lou fight, I wanted to get the Ice Spear for the range, and I had to kill another Knight's Cavalry for his skill, and I used the Malekith's weapon skill for this fight because it just absolutely destroys this man, and some poor bear who wandered onto the fight that didn't know what he was getting himself into got obliterated as well. RIP, random bear. You will be missed. 
Turns out I made a great decision though, because I killed this man faster than a furry nuts while watching The Lion King, and that's, well, that's pretty cool. No beat! Listen. Listen. You <laughs> could be written. Badass bitch! Big ass titties, man. Got fucking AK size of a fucking minivan. Woo! Listen. Y'all niggas got problems? Do y'all do it? So much fucking money in my pockets, I fucking walk stupid. Hold on. Hold up. Watch out. Bad bitch look good in some nice pants. Bet my bitch look good in some nice pants. <laughs> Niggas see me, they be like, shit, goddamn, AK-47 tucked in that nigga nice pants. Hold up, hold up, hold up. <laughs> Y'all got a little nigga started on some G shit. Who that nigga that looks swagged out? That's me, bitch. <laughs> and now for our final decision in the game. What will I take with me to the last boss fight? I was pretty conflicted at first until I saw it. The waterfall dance, of course. The best, hardest to dodge attack in the whole game. It must absolutely wreck bosses. Yeah, it's actually not that great. So instead, I went with the Red Vane's Flame because she's weak to fire and that makes this fight way easier. This is, in fact, what I am talking about. This actually seems super OP since it does a ton of damage and you can knock her down pretty easy. And even better, the skill actually has a decent range because the flame will keep traveling for a few seconds if it doesn't hit anything first. Unfortunately, Raccoon's kind of a cock, and she'll usually absorb it if it travels for a few seconds first, but it's still pretty cool nonetheless. But after blasting her in the face a handful of times, we move on to the Elden Beast, who also surprisingly gets staggered pretty easy, but the fire damage is way less because he's not weak to fire, so that kind of sucks ass, but it's okay. We ball. Most of his attacks are pretty easy to avoid, so I just kept running up on him, dodging an attack or two, and then just started smashing that L2 button, praying he'll get staggered for some easy damage. Sadly though, when he does a sparkler attack, I knocked him down a couple times, but when you stagger him, the sparklers do not go away, and I'm a greedy little piggy, so that made me die a couple times. But we come back more prepared, with flames in my eyes and a dildo in my ass, and we show this beast who the real boss is, and we officially beat Elden Ring only using weapon skills, and absolutely nobody was surprised. Thank you guys so much for watching, especially if you made it this far. I have some more Elden Ring videos and some Dark Souls videos playing and another God of War video. So if you want to see that, like and subscribe if you think I deserve it. But have a good